<clears throat> so this is another edge panel, uh, but we're going to try to keep the scope very narrow, right? It's, it's just about, uh, at the far edge, what's going to be there. Is it go we're going to run VMs, we're going to run bare metal, we're running in containers, we're going to run containers inside of, uh, run by KVM, or is it going to be deployed to bare metal, that kind of thing. Um, to kick it off, I get a couple of questions here. So basically, uh, the, the panel would like to go through, you know, what are the options for what you run at the edge? Yeah. So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Kasim Arham. I'm part of uh, Juniper Solutions team. And from last four and a half year, uh, mostly working with uh, OpenStack. And the focus was uh, uh, Tungsten Fabric, which is the new name of Contrail. So, uh, going back to the question, so overall, uh, today if we look into that, uh, industry has already uh, designed and validated and most of the uh, core, with the big sites are already in production. But now a lot of focus is coming in 5G edge sites, which are mostly the cell sites. So if we look into the cell site infrastructure, so there are multiple uh, options available, but if we look from the infrastructure point of view, which is also the one of the main theme here, open infra. So we actually need uh, compute network storage. So if you actually categorize that part as a small subset of a big data center, so you can actually design that, but there are a lot of limitation in terms of how the workload will be handled there, what are the orchestration options you will have. So if you take those things in consideration, we are actually limited with the number of uh, uh, design options, and then we have to come up and uh, address compute networking storage in a, in a way that overall you can provide seamless experience at that as well. So I will actually try to take a little bit time from the networking angle. So if you look into the OpenStack, which is running Neutron at the central side, and if we are extending that part at the edge, Definitely, uh, the Neutron can be there, the other plugins can be there. And then, if, uh, from the workload point of view, uh, today, if you look into that side, that can be a VM, that can be a bare metal, that can be a container. So from networking angle, you will be looking for an option which can provide network, uh, networking seamlessly across all type of workload. Yeah. Um. So I, I will take it from the, so I question whether you can use Neutron at that for, it, for an edge implementation. Yeah. So, because um, I don't think that it has the tools really to support a WAN deployment. Yeah. So, um, so edge, um, and of course the constraints at the edge, you know, some people, uh, unfortunately, um, like a lot of telecoms, you know, when you hear talk about edge and 5G, um, when you dig down into it, they're talking about what you would consider a data center. So f typically they'll have five or 10 or 15 or even 20 racks of stuff in it. So for a telecom, that's a tiny implementation. Yeah. But, um, you know, for the average user, they're like, well, that's just a data center. <laughs> um, that's bigger than my data center, which is usually four racks in a closet. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I think the constraints of getting it down to a box or getting it down to, you know, uh, something uh, on a light pole, that really takes a whole lot of more squeezing down the essentials. And um, I don't think the answer is it's containers or VMs or whatever. I think it's a combination depending upon where it is in the, in the edge infrastructure. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll kind of follow with uh, what you said. Um, it really depends on the application, ultimately. So for example, if you are trying to virtualize a, a basement unit, a BBU, you would, you would certainly not uh, use the same technology as if you're trying to push an analytics application down to the edge, right? So you will need a combination of both. It always depends on what you are trying to deploy. So I kind of agree with what you're saying. You have VM containers, bare metal, 
and uh, you might also consider unikernels if you uh, if you want. Yep, and microservices. And microservices. So the trick is getting them all to work together, right? Yeah. <laughs> so so uh, I'll let, I can give a brief summary of the of the the, the answer. And the the answer is it depends on the on the workloads that. Uh, uh, what your workloads are look uh, look like, and uh, how you would like to deal with your workloads. Um, so the, the answer is uh, it, it depends. And uh, I would give a recommendation is to do a proof of concept before uh, you implement your use case because it is use case dependent. Uh, this is like an engineering trade-off. If you would like to expect expect more uh, security, you, you might pick up uh, uh, VMs. If you expect more. Uh, efficiency, you may pick up uh, containers, and you can also use uh, the, the both since if they can integrate well with each other, and if you, and you can also use bare metal if your uh, if your applications are strictly uh, respecting to the uh, compliance ma measurement, and uh, there are some other solutions like Kata containers, and uh, which can uh, give the speed speed execution and. Uh, security at the same time. It also uh, minimizes the, the resource utilization. So there are several, several choices that all depend on uh, what you need to implement for your use case. And to further add to that, if we look into uh, what we have done in VNF and NF fever. So initially, if you recall, whenever the new VNF was actually given, it was actually the whole line card was converted into a big image. So overall, when we're talking about edge, the application also has to be optimized. And then they have to actually uh, take, uh, adopt the cloud-native architecture. And based on that, if they are coming up with the container-based uh, architecture, VM, and the bare metal and layer 2 connectivity will also be essential because the sum of the component, especially in 5G, cannot be virtualized. So all that combination will stay there. So, aside from workload, um, what are some of the, the pros and cons of, of each? For instance, um, some of the limitations with containers might be uh, hardware acceleration, that kind of thing. Uh, could you guys touch on some of the pros and cons? Uh, yeah, uh, let's say, for example, uh, containers. Uh, containers are fast to run. So uh, if you ever started a container in your life, you know that it startups, well, it downloads the image first if you don't have the image, and then it, uh, it runs in a matter of seconds. Uh, it, it, on the opposite side, if you are using VMs, you need to, to boot the operating system if you haven't, and uh, there's a small delay there. Uh, cons of containers, well, you uh, probably know there, there are um, uh, security issues that you need to address. Uh, so you need to, to take real good care of what you, uh, what you get from the internet, what you uh, are downloading as an image, what you are deploying in your edge, uh, and how you set your permissions. Uh, so uh, you, you need to be uh, aware of that constantly. So um, let me. So uh, what I find is that um, a lot of applications have not been containerized, which means that if you have, if you're using an application that you've had for a while, or if it's a commercial application, and the, the example I always use is firewalls um, and security applications, they're not containerized. They're not going to containerize in a million years, um, you know, unless they can be assured that the container will be, you know, absolutely secure because they're selling security, right? Yep. Uh, and um, so those, and then there's, and so when you do think, oh yeah, containers are good because they're small, they're efficient and fast, you do have to add in the effort to containerize and in the case of many applications, that's not even possible. Um, another thing I find with containers is the, um, the inability to service chain them together is, is a significant drawback. Um, and this, and again, particularly in the networking world where you want to string together applications, uh, containers can be significantly less efficient actually uh, in terms of, of the speed and efficiency because you get a lot of, of back and forth and, and, and uh, north-south traffic bouncing around that doesn't need to. And if we look into the, the base 
uh, equipment available, which is an x86 server with storage networking and, uh, and compute. And, and if we are considering a container there, definitely the limitations uh, will be there from, from performance I.O. side. Then you can have an option of a DPDK. Then you can have an option of SRIV. And going to the service chaining, definitely there are multiple options now available in terms of Multus CNI chaining. And then uh, also Tungsten Fabric is also coming up with the uh, multiple interface support that can actually bring firewall into uh, this whole equation and then protect the service chaining via the workload. Then uh, I will uh, also go with the containers workload instantiated at the edge. Definitely you required some type of security as well, so that thing also has to be taken in consideration. So, so th those are all great, and, and those are, and Multis is one that I know is addressing that, um, the, the need for containers to understand networks better. Um, however, do understand those are in development. <laughs> uh, yes, that is correct, but ultimately, with, if we look into the Kubernetes, that has a single interface, and they, that the whole orchestration was built from a .NET uh, tier, uh, multiple tier application, tier one, tier two, tier three, but if we would like to go and adopt that same model in, in telco side, especially VNF uh, uh, side, we have to actually either adopt their web scale architecture, we have to come up with the MMES gateway, P gateway type uh, function as a web scaling architecture to which is get benefit happen. of, which is not happening. Yeah. So, but here just to see where the whole vendor will adopt and how they will actually come up with this cloud native architecture, then we can actually uh, take, that, uh, take, take that architecture in consideration and address those things from the networking and storage side. So are you saying uh, VNF is not a good fit for containers right now? Is that the consensus? So VNF will be transformed into CNF. So I will call it container network function. And that function will be actually, uh, uh, so I have not seen it yet, so just to be yeah, honest. That, that's gonna but take I would a few love years. to see as a CNF, as a three-tier application, front-end, back-end, and database. And then they have to adopt their protocol. If you look into the telco side, everyone remember SS7, and there are so many complicated protocols they use. Now, ultimately, they are coming to GTP, uh, SCTP protocol, simple protocols. I will go one step further. When they adopt this CNF, I am actually looking, they should actually have a multiple tier, tier one, tier two, tier three app and they have to actually follow this web scale architecture to scale their application. So I cannot answer how the vendor will address it, but this is, again, my thoughts at this stage uh, working on, so, on so, different problems. So the bottom line is, is it's definitely a work in progress. Um, and, and I think the goal is to get to containers because I think there's an understanding that those are more efficient. However, you know, there are there is work around microservices and Unicode, which for particularly, um, you know, I'm thinking of like Lambda and some of those other sort of uh, in the IoT space where the, the constraints of the hardware are extremely significant. Um, and, uh, and so you really have to think in l little fragments of code. And I think that's personally, I think that's the future of a lot of this, of a lot of where Edge is going to go. And the last thing I would like to add uh, based on some of the interaction we have with the web scale side, they have single responsibility metrics. So that means that a single application has to be reside in a single container and then you adopt the cloud uh, native architecture for that. So, so, so ultimately, so those things has to be taken in consideration when we are actually launching application and building application on the edge. So that will not only go on the standard uh, mobility applications and CNF, it will also go to the Mac type uh, uh, application, which is a client server model and the Mac architecture and the CUPS as well. I think, I think you want to say something. Yeah, uh, well, again, it really depends on the applications. Like you said, um, there, there are functions that you, you won't be able to, uh, to containerize. Let's say, for example, uh, firewalls. Uh, that's one typical application that you, you won't be able to, uh, to do. Or uh, virtual BBU or uh, a VPC, for example. You, you, you need to, to have that kind of um, stability and you need to provide the SLAs that are needed 
uh, for your for your customers because you're selling them. So you you need to provide that kind of uh, that kind of predictability in your uh, in your infrastructure. So it, it will always depend on the application. If, for example, you're talking about uh, virtual reality and augmented reality, that's one thing. And if you're talking about uh, proper VNS, then it's our domain. So as we talked about so much about uh, the drawbacks of containers, so uh, there is another option named the color container. What do you think about the color containers? As, they, as I said just, uh, just now, that the color containers can provide uh, the speedy execution and uh, the security at the same time. And it also uses uh, customized kernel, gas kernel images to minimize uh, the resource utilization. So uh, what do you guys think about color containers? Oh, I like them, <laughs> but but again, a lot of the applications I'm using are are commercial applications. So you know, I have to go to the vendor and say, "Oh, guys, this is a product you've been selling for 15 years. Guess what? You get to uh, re-architect it from scratch." <laughs> and the answer is generally hell no. <laughs> so um, I think uh, you know a lot of the what you're talking about, cloud native. I'm all for that. I just think it's just going to take a long time. Yeah. Okay, agree. So, um, we didn't really talk too much about security. What, what, what about security uh, between VMs, containers? Yeah. So, if we take different type of workload, which is part of our discussion today, container, VM, as well as the bare metal, definitely that has to be secured. And the security has to be implemented from the networking side as well as the application side, all the DDoS type of attack. And so then we have to make a selection of uh, the technology which actually can seamlessly provide connectivity as well as security across that. And I will actually, on the security topic, I will go one step further. So even in new 5G sites, we are not seeing those sites connect connecting to the core sites. There are actually a use cases where those sites will have a Colu or Equinix or some distributed uh, uh, a connection going to a public cloud. So then if you look into the edge, edge is actually moving toward the multi-cloud architecture as well. So then when you talk about multi-cloud, then the security is again a another aspect which you have to take it in consideration. And you have to make sure your site where your actual application workload will reside along with your Mac applications. So if those Mac application server is running in AWS, Azure, or GCP, you need a secure IPsec-based, ELS-based connection. So, so technology selection uh, will be very important as part of uh, those use cases. And definitely those 5G sites will not be traditional site going to the transport, ending up in a central core site. Those will have a distributed connectivity and those distributed connectivity has to be scaled. So in that aspect, so there are multiple technologies available which can provide those uh, security layer on the networking level, level, and then they can also secure it to the public cloud side as well. So, so another aspect of security which is very important in the edge, which doesn't apply in the data center, is the fact that physical security, um, because Typically, these edge these edge um, devices are not located in a in a data center. You know, some of the you know the uh, some of the 5G things are sort of mini data centers. But um, what I'm seeing, particularly in the IoT space, um, is they're they're in or or um, you know smart cities and and some of the other stuff. They're in they're in harsh environments. They're stuck on light poles. They're in you know they're in uh, oil and gas. Um, um, Facility, facilities in the middle of the desert, they're out, you know, wind farms uh, in the middle of the ocean. Uh, so, you know, I think the wind farm in the middle of the ocean probably has some physical security, but, um, uh, you know, it, it also has harsh environments. So you have to, you have to think of those, those aspects too. Um, you know, and security in my mind is almost impossible if, if, the, if, if the general public has access to the device. So if the device is sitting on a light pole, yeah, the general public actually does have access. So you really have to think about security in the sense that, you know, if if a bad guy gets access to that device, it shuts itself down and, you know, doesn't, you know, 
can't be used to get back into the network or some somehow other harm the rest of the network. So these are considerations that we've never had to deal with behind you know behind the closed doors of a of a safe data center. And that's where you bring in the some of the best practices of the uh, security used in the data centers. Uh, for example, um, thinking about separating the the data plane, the control plane, management mm -hmm. planes is re really important. And at the physical level, not just uh, virtually or um, let's say, for example, you have an interface that you can uh, enable uh, with a backdoor or something, um, it's not enough. You need to, to be physically separated because your user will be able to access some of those endpoints. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it really is important and that's up to the, the hardware vendors to, to figure out uh, ways to report uh, intrusion detections, fault management, things like that. That's right. It does have to happen at the hardware level. It can't can't be at the software level. I mean, no. if if that box can be taken off a light pole and taken home, you know, and stuck in, you know, and plugged in and somehow be accessed, that's not that's not a good thing. No. So for for me, that the, the edge security can be enhanced uh, from uh, two angles. The first angle that is uh, that the question has already pointed out that related to the communication protocols. And another one is uh, that uh, Beth has just uh, pointed out that uh, is related to the infrastructure security. Uh, for the infrastructure security that we can b benefit from some of the hardware security technologies like uh, TPM, SGX, and so on, we can also leverage some OS level security enhancements like uh, uh, integrating, integrating environment architecture in the Linux systems. And from the communication protocols perspective that uh, we can <laughs> Uh, I just want to respond to this question, how to provide secure connectivity at the edge uh, using containers. Uh, the simplest uh, answer would be you can run your containers in the, in the VMs or use uh, uh, VM-based containers, but uh, this might not be uh, your expected answer. There are some uh, other options, uh, like uh, you can do the se security enhancements at the application layer using HTTPS and uh, uh, using TLS uh, in the for example, in the, in, in the containers, you can also add uh, some other security enhancement uh, gateways to implement some lower layer security enhancements for your, for your Edge Cloud. Uh, those would also be the, uh, be the technology uh, technical app options. So, okay, that, that's all that I want to express. So, I, uh, Excuse my naivety, but I, I was always under the impression that by nature containers are less secure than uh, a full-blown VM. Um, is that not the case? And if that is the case, uh, I know Kata Containers is supposed to address some of those <laughs> kinds of issues, clear containers. Do you guys have any, any comments on that, up-and-coming technologies? Yeah, absolutely. So, but with the passage of time, they are actually coming up with some new initiative with CNCF for protect the container side. The container biggest drawback is access to the kernel and the user space. So, some work is already going on. Definitely, those things will evolve and then they will be applied there. But ultimately, the trend so far is whenever someone adopt the container architecture and microservices, they prefer to run those things in a VM. And then VM in a container today is the, from security point of view, is the most preferred approach. But I actually think that will change with the work which is going on in community and the, some of the stuff coming, going forward. Well, right, because running a container in a VM is just adding another layer of infrastructure yeah. that's theoretically unnecessary. It's always amazing to me how much we kind of re recreate the wheel over and over again. So you can have VMs and containers and containers and VMs and VMs and VMs and containers and containers and, you know, it's kind of becomes a, you know, an iterative <laughs> process there. Um, you know, recursive, uh, we've, we've uh, recreated recursive uh, infrastructure. Yeah. So we, we've talked about containers and, and VMs, some of the pros and cons. Uh, we haven't really talked about bare metal, which depending on your workload, I think bare metal at the edge definitely has a place. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'd like to get some feedback from you guys on that. So uh, if we look into the traditional cell site, you can see even in 5G, they already rely some of the component they cannot containerize. That has to be, remains as a physical component. 
So I actually envision that part as a bare metal as well because that is just like equipment which required a layer two or maximum layer three connectivity. And along with that, if you look into even traditional core sites, which are the main, uh, main data center sites, there is already connectivity to the legacy hardware and the VNF side as well. So bare metal will stay there, but uh, important aspect from infrastructure is who will provide seamless uh, connectivity to those bare metal. Bare metal, when it is actually there, it has to be bootstrapped, it has to be uh, uh, actually re-imaged. So we need ironic type capability there first to bring it up. So once it is up, then we need a networking type capability just like DSCP, DNS to provide it a, an IP and layer two connection and then if that bare metal is connected to a fabric which has a top of the racks which is spine and leaf architecture, then someone ac actually has to configure that fabric as well. So you can see there are multiple approaches to that and, and then with the fabric side, I also uh, think that uh, the orchestration which is used for the edge should be fully capable of providing that connectivity to the bare metal and then the orchestration we use, if we use OpenStack, then we can use Ironic for the re-imaging and all that stuff. And once the infrastructure is up, then we can use other networking features uh, to even bring bare metal in as a part of, uh, the, uh, 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 part of the infrastructure and direct connection to VMs and containers. So, so you bring up a good point, which we kind of skirted around, which is, of course, the edge is dependent upon orchestration and automation to be successful. Yeah. Um, because every time you send somebody out to reboot a, a box out in the field, you know, that costs, costs money, time, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. So um, I, I'd like to talk about, um, you know, the different containers versus VMs and versus bare metal in terms of ease of orchestrating. Because yeah. um, there are definitely differences in the, in the tools that are available. And again, you know, over time, I think this will kind of smooth out and they'll become better tools. But right now, I'd say that the orchestration tools are probably best for the VMs and not so good for the containers and really awful for bare metal. Uh, actually, we have a orchestration program, open source project named uh, ONAP, Open Networking yep. Automation Platform, uh, which has a component named the multi cloud. Uh, this can have the multiple uh, types of uh, infrastructure uh, being plugged into that uh, orchestration system. Uh, this supports uh, like uh, OpenStack. Uh, of uh, different uh, versions, it also supports Starling X, and uh, this will, uh, I think, it will definitely support uh, some uh, uh, container container management uh, uh, project as well. So, yeah, that's. Uh, I agree. Uh, ONAP is is critical for the and now ONAP right now is very telco fe um, yeah. focused, which is yeah. a little unfortunate because. Uh, you know, right now, most of what's going on in the development and the edge is really telco focused, but I don't think that's going to stay that way. You know, I, I personally am already working on some applications that are not, I mean, yes, I work for telco, but um, the applications are not strictly telco uh, applications. Yeah. And about bare metal, there's, a, there's always that special application that you want, for example, some. Uh, some specific instruction set for from the the CPU that you you want to fetch uh, because you've bought, for example, uh, a, a specialized CPU that's uh, for transcoding. So uh, you'd need to figure out where it is and um, provision that uh, that specific resource with uh, with your load. Um, so bare metal is kind of the. Um, it, 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 it's right in the, it depends. It depends on the application, what you're trying to do. Uh, if you want to program an FPGA that has a, a, an ARM soft core in it, uh, you, you can do so, but you need, you need to be able to detect that resource. So that's where uh, we are developing uh, a proper descriptive models to, to be able to d describe what actually the hardware is. Uh, so you can, uh, you can manage and orchestrate your, uh, your applications after that. Yeah. We're getting, uh, we're getting close to time. I had, I had one more question that because ONAP, ONAP you, came up. Do you want to open it to? Uh, yeah, questions. then we'll open the floor okay. for questions. But uh, so um, does ONAP 
also cover bare metal provisioning? Is that part of ONAP? So as per my information, uh, not today, but definitely the work is in progress because uh, ONAP is actually the new name of Ecom, which is actually the uh, main AT&T project. But definitely with the new evolution uh, with the Acreno project and some of the new stuff which is actually hosted in bare metal. So it is actually not available as per my information today, but I think there is some work going on. So Acreno and Airship both support air metal, bare metal, I believe. Uh, they support the management of that. Uh, but uh, then on top of that, bringing it up end-to-end -end connectivity, uh, that is... Uh, they assume that yeah. it's... They because this is, the airship is the infrastructure part, yeah. and I think the question from the ONAP point of view, the provisioning of application and running end-to-end. -end. Am I correct? Uh, well, I, I know that ONAP is res responsible for orchestration. Yeah. I was wondering if, if part of ONAP is to actually provision bare metal. Uh, pixie uh, boot. I actually don't know. So that part yeah. is going to airship, as yeah. uh, Beth said. Yeah. So, so they further divide it. ONAP will consume a, right. uh, uh, yep. some kind of BMAS? Okay. Right. O ONAP is the controlling orchestration. So, so. we're getting close to time. Um, if, if nobody had any other ONAP comments, I'll let the floor ask some questions. We have a couple minutes. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask? The mic's right there. Uh, a question for Beth. Uh, uh, you had mentioned about the comparative weakness of container orchestration. Uh, uh, have you taken a look at Kubernetes? What are your thoughts on that, if so? Um, I'm, I'm as actually thinking more along the lines of, of um, container orchestration over WAN, op, at WAN connections. So yeah, container orchestration within the data center, yeah, no problem. But when you have a top of rack switch running 100 gig, you don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but over a WAN connection or over a satellite connection or intermittent or connection, then you have a problem. <laughs> um, hi, I have one question. You guys talked about containers and VMs as possible um, deployment models for edge applications. What are your thoughts on unikernels? Um, is that also a possible uh, deployment model or is that completely out of date? What is it? So we could, was it mini cons? I couldn't hear what you said. Um, my, my question is, um, um, what are your thoughts on unikernels as a possible application oh, model oh, for Edge? Yeah. Um, well, for the IoT part uh, or uh, a UCP, um, unikernels would be a good fit. Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, orchestration applications that uh, that's pushing unikernels at the moment, but maybe I'm wrong. Um, Do you know any? Yeah. No, I actually not familiar with unikernels. So yeah, I so, know a so little bit about unikernels, but mostly they've been at the IoT on the IoT side, and 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 again, as I said earlier, I think IoT uh, is in its infancy um, from the from the edge perspective, um, so I, I suspect we'll be seeing more of that uh, going Yeah, forward. I mean, um, Unikernels as a technology has been around for close to 20 years now. Yeah. But like you, like you rightly mentioned, um, this is uh, not something that is in the scope of most of the orchestration frameworks like Kubernetes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Interesting. Any more questions, folks? If not, you can go have beers. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank the panel. Uh, we're between you and the beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.